their part, um, God's promise sustained on them. And so if that was able to happen with the old covenant, which was the works covenant, imagine how better our covenant is. Our covenant is through Jesus, to where Jesus did his part of the covenant. And if we're in him, then it's all, all of the benefits that are his are ours. And so um, studying through, um, you know, historically that E.W. Kenyon's church, people was healthy, people were not getting sick, and uh, Curry did research with people that were in John G. Lake's churches, people were not getting sick. And so we're seeing um, um, a lot of the JGLM affiliated churches like in Ukraine and Russia are shifting that direction to where um, practically that local bodies, um, one by one, start uh, getting everybody in their group, whatever size the group is, you know, like my team or a church, you know, whatever it is, to be in, in full health. And we see that when Jesus um, preached the gospel, when he preached the kingdom, healing was something that he showed as a physical, physical aspect. The physical manifestation of the kingdom was physical healing. And so as a church, for the world to want to be want to want to have anything to do with the body of Christ, we have to be able to show them something. And so, um, unless we can get to a point where we can prove the kingdom, then people then will just be like any other church where it's just you know like good worship and all of that is good. And all of that is good, but that is not what uh, Jesus intended and what Jesus. I wanted to go through, uh, read a couple scriptures, uh, just kind of remind our, us like what Jesus commanded us, what his commandments are for, for our church, um, and where we're at, and, and how we're going to start practically heading in a direction, and, and be obedient, be obedient to his commands. So the first scripture um, that I want to go to, I mean, all of you guys know this, so let's go first to Matthew. Um, Chapter 28, starting in verses um, 18. Before he left, Jesus said, He came and spoke to them, saying, All authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. Go, therefore, and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all things that I have commanded you, and lo, I am with you always, even to the end of age. And we see that Jesus did not necessarily need the authority. He already had the authority. So the question is, like, why was authority given to him? Because when he walked the earth, he obviously already walked in authority. And we know that Jesus is the head and we're his body. So if he has the authority and he's the head of the body of Christ, that means for us that we have the authority. So that authority that he had, we now have. That authority does, that never left us. It never left the church. But the problem is that the church doesn't recognize it, doesn't realize it, and is not walking in it. And so um, Jesus was the Lord of the church, and the church is his body. He was to use that authority. So now he wants to use that authority through the church. And we are as his local body. Um, and there's many churches in this world, but uh, we're going to more concentrate on our um, on, on our body, part of the body, local body here in Portland. Um, and so our responsibility is to walk out in that authority. Um, and so that authority has been given to him for the benefit of the church. So because he has it, because he is the head and we are the body, that's a benefit for us as his body to walk into. Authority. If there is no way for the church to use it, then it's like um, having a capital that's worthless. So uh, we know, for example, like that many governments in this world they have a lot of capital. Like a lot of there's a lot of rich countries where the government holds on to all the all the riches, uh, but they don't pass it on to the people. So the church has the same thing with all authority that God gave to Jesus. And we buried it, uh, the church buried it in theology, and the 
the church is like the the, the 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 members don't have the ability to to seek it out uh, because it's not taught, and so it's not accessible, and the, the body of Christ is not using it. But Jesus clearly commanded, and, and so I, I know we know these scriptures. We went over these. We go over these scriptures a lot, um, but. A little bit in a little bit, I'm going to share a testimony um, what the enemy tried to do to me on this trip and how important it is. Like, I, I really saw the difference, um, and maybe I'll, I'll just get into it right now. Um, so, in 2013, I was, I was attacked um, by the enemy pretty hard. Uh, Wayne remembers, uh, Wayne prayed for me, and, and I got healed. Um, and when I got healed, basically, I received that healing. And so it's been five years since that time. And so a couple times I had symptoms and then you know, I kicked them off. And so in the middle of our trip, I, was, I went to sleep and I was sleeping. But one of the things that I've been practicing, like we discussed you know, on Sunday during communion, is constantly practicing uh, the practical applications of healing. And so we discuss our communion. One of the things that we do is when we eat, um, you know, you're not necessarily required to do it every single time, but as many times as you remember, because Jesus said, do this in my remembrance, what I would do is every time that I would eat something, I would say, Father, I thank you that by your stripes I'm healed. I thank you that my body is healed. Sicknesses cannot touch me. And so I've been proclaiming and speaking that word and saying on that word, you know, for, for a long time now. And um, the enemy throughout the day does not touch me uh, when it comes to, to my body. And so I wake up in the middle of the night and I'm in this excruciating pain. I mean, like, I am in such sharp pain to where, I mean, like, you want to scream from that pain. And so I get up, um, you know, kind of like, trying to figure out what's going on because um, I was asleep. And immediately as I'm trying to open, wake up, my mind is still not very, you know, I'm still half asleep. Um, I started seeing like these demons on the side of me just like just bombarding me. Like, that's it, you know, we, we got you. You know, like last time you got out of the operation, you're now in Mexico, you're going to be operated on. Um, these doctors are horrible and just like one stupid thought after another stupid thought and, and that's the thing that um, the devil says a lot of stuff that's, that's really obnoxious, it's really stupid but it's very aggressive and it's like it's coming from both directions and I literally saw like these creatures just you know just going back and forth um, and just you know, just saying all this stuff but um, as I open up my eyes you know like I you know started uh, just figuring out what's what's really going on with me, and it's like, okay, you know, this is whatever's happening is not good. But I, the difference was from 2013 to now, is that I, I felt this peace, and I, I was I did not get rattled, and I just you know immediately my mind automatically went back. Um, I remembered eating again, and I remembered that what I, you know what I've been proclaiming, saying by His stripes I'm healed, and sickness cannot touch me. And so my mind, because I've been doing it for so long, automatically just started doing that thing. And then I just kind of got up, started walking around, and I said, okay, in the name of Jesus, devil, you're a liar. Um, you're not going to touch me. I am not going to ER. I'm not going anywhere. Everything's going to stop, and everything's going to go away. And I just started walking around, and this, this whole piece, just, you know, just going back and forth um, around the room. Did not want to wake up Simon and Natalie. And then um, kept going around, and I started after about I don't know, 30 minutes or so. Um, the pain kind of started going down a little bit, um, and but still, you know, the devil's trying to get me to panic, um, and he's sending me all kinds of thoughts. You know, maybe you should run to the front desk, or maybe you should do this, and just nonstop, just bombardment of like him trying to tell me what to do, but the voice inside of me of the Holy Spirit was very loud and clear and it was so peaceful to where it just like it was amazing how, how much uh, presence of peace I had in me and so I just continued to pr proclaim what I believe what I stand on and to 
devil, it doesn't matter what you're trying, it doesn't matter what you want me to do, I'm not going to do any of it. And so by, by that time, you know, Natalie woke up, so I told her what's going on. She, um, I asked her to pray for me. Uh, she prayed for me. And then um, the pain by that time was already kind of like it went down in half. Um, but then all of a sudden it started shifting. Um, and this was even a little bit before she prayed for me. I started, so like when the enemy figured out that I'm good with, with what he attacked me before, that I'm settled on that, all of a sudden it shifted to my stomach. And all of a sudden, like I started feeling these sharp pains in my stomach. And, and then because I never dealt with that part, like my stomach is very healthy, all of a sudden, you know, like he's, he's trying to catch me off guard. And so now I'm having pain like on, you know, on, on both on both both sides of me. And in the he's like, yep, that's it. You know, like your body's falling apart right now. Now you really have to go. And I'm like, no, I'm not going anywhere. You know, like by his stripes, I'm healed. And it doesn't matter what part of my body. And so after Natalie prayed for me, at that point, you know, I didn't see anything change. And then so the devil was like, so what are you going to do? What are you going to do? You know, are you going to run downstairs? I'm like, no, I'm going to go back to bed and I'm going to lay down. And when I lay down, uh, at that point, the pain kind of intensified more. And then so I set up a little bit. And I'm like, okay, so the devil's, you know, now he doesn't want, he wants me to sit here and be tormented by it. I'm like, no, I'm not going to do that. My responsibility is I was sleeping. He rudely woke me up. And so now I'm going to go down. I'm going to lay down. And so I said, in Jesus' name, I'm going to lay down right now. I'm going to fall asleep and, and, and everything will be gone. And so I lay down. Uh, I still, like, I still experienced the pain, you know, I kind of moved around a little bit, um, but I think within a few minutes or whatever, I was asleep, and then I wake up in the morning, like nothing has ever happened, and I just woke up and I said, you know, thank you, Jesus, you know, that's, that's the truth that I've been fighting for, that's the truth that I stood up, that, that, that you paid the price for. That was the reality to where I saw it manifest. The devil tried to get me um, to do something, like trying to get me symptoms, and I realized that that's all it was. It was just symptoms because obviously if there was a problem, then when I woke up in the morning, there'd still be a problem. But I knew it was an attack, but he makes his attack so strong, and at that point, is it's up to us to decide. Do we agree with it? Kind of like what Natalie was sharing uh, with her testimony. Do we agree with it? Because when we agree with it, then it then it, then it sticks around and then it starts doing its damage. But during the the, the physical attack or the, the symptom attack, if we stop it, if we stand on the word of God, then at that point the, the enemy has nothing. In us. He can't he can't touch us. He can't um, he can't continue doing anything else. And then and so this was like in the middle of a trip. And then since then, like nothing, like you know, he didn't touch me at all. Um, but the interesting part is, like, he tried to do this because um, the, the thoughts that I was thinking throughout this trip and the, the, that I was praying for is I'm trying to make this decision to make the whole, um, to, to propose to our whole group to start heading in a direction to where everybody will be completely healthy and everybody will be in divine health. And what he tried to do is he tried to mess me up because he knew that if he could get me to go to the hospital or to get, you know, to get operated on or do something, at that point I will lose all boldness and I will be, I will be ineffective. I will not be able to operate in this anymore because I've been defeated. And when, if you're defeated, it's pretty hard to do anything else with it. And so um, he did that pretty much in the middle of the trip. And so... But boy, but that, that morning when I went to have breakfast, I sit down and, and immediately he's like, well, you know, now you can't eat anything, you know, because then he tried to send me uh, memories and pictures of, you know, like what, you know, what he tried to do to sign what he tried to do to Natalie. And I'm like, no, I'm going to be eating this food right now. The food's going to stay in me. It's going to do what it needs to do. And so after that breakfast, then like the attacks just faded out and went away. And then the rest of the trip, uh, not even one time that he tried to give me even thoughts. Like I wouldn't even get thoughts anymore that you know that something's gonna happen or anything else. Um, but I had to stand on the word of God. I had to stand. It was very basic. I didn't have to do anything complicated. I just stood on, on one scripture that by His stripes 
I am healed. Jesus paid the price. It is my right. That's what I stand on. And that's how it's going to be. Um, I, I didn't have to do anything complicated. I, I, I didn't have to do anything that's, that somebody else cannot do. And so, um, but it has to be persistent. And we talk a lot about this, that the reason why we do the communion, the reason why we do the proclamations is, and we, it's very simple. And a lot of people ask me, like, you know, like, what's the point? This is so simple. Like, why, why would you want to do that? It's like, it's not, the devil's are complicated. Why are we doing things so simple? Because that's what Jesus commanded us to do. Jesus did not make anything complicated. Jesus told us to do things that are very, very simple. But we have to do it enough times. What's interesting, um, so we have historical records showing that other churches, you know, have done this, have lived in divine health. Um, and so I was just thinking a lot about, like, how, like, the steps that we're going to take to get there. And um, I was, I'm also uh, going through some of Caroline Leaf's stuff. Um, and what's interesting, one of the things that she says is the way that we're created, the way God created us, is that uh, there is no middle ground. So our neurons or our circuitry in our mind, in our, uh, like we're created um, for love and to be loved. That's how our mind is created. That, that's the standard that God set for our mind. And so what happens is if we're loving and being loved and accepting love, then those neurons just keep building and keep building stronger. If other things are happening, then what starts happening is... Uh, the other way, things start falling apart, and then so things start like malfunctioning, and uh, our neurons start like. And she showed pictures for those of you that watch. She showed pictures like what starts happening to our brain, and so it starts uh, misfiring, and it starts basically when our where our mind starts uh, being wired improperly, then our body starts little by little starts falling apart because everything goes back to our mind. So like if our soul. Um, John, John said that, like, as, as our soul, um, um, basically, as our, as, our, as our soul flourishes, you know, so, so is our body. Uh, you just prosper, yeah. Being in health, just as your soul yeah. prospers. Basically, like, as our soul prospers, our body, our health also prospers. So, like, everything's tied together. And it's really cool how Christian, Christian science is able to catch up with the Word of God and prove what the Word of God is actually saying. And so... Um, Did you say Christian science? Christian, Christian science, not Scientology. Christian science, not, not the religion Christian There's science. There's a called Christian uh, science. I understand that, yes. I know that you know everything about the Christian science, but I'm talking about scientists that, you know, that are Christian. Okay. Scientists that are good scientists, that are Christian, that are studying, uh, looking at science from the Word of God perspective. Um, for example, so um, they're able to see what the Word of God says and see how our mind is actually by studies, how it's all tied together. And so, and the studies that they're doing is um, the proper, like when people are proclaiming, are believing, are saying the right stuff, um, then as you say the right stuff, as you speak what the Word of God says about you, then your mind, your neurons start building on that and become stronger on what you're actually supposed to be, the way your mind is supposed to function, and then your body functions properly. And so one of the things that the enemy was able to do is infiltrate a lot of negativity in people. And so everything is set up through um, our senses that's coming in from this world, from the world knowledge is coming in, everything's coming in negative. You know, everything's fear-based. Everything is set up for us to be worried about stuff, not knowing what tomorrow's going to bring, not knowing uh, what kind of sickness is going to come. Like, if you turn on the news, everything's filled with negativity. Everything's filled against what God intended for us to be filling ourselves with. And so, we have a decision to make what... Um, what to do in our life. Do we allow that negativity? Do we allow what the world, what the devil's bringing uh, to infiltrate us? Or do we allow the word of God to take over our mind? Do we allow his 
his word to do his job in our life, in our mind. And um, the interesting part, like I said in the beginning, is that there is no, there is no, like, you can't just be hovering in the middle. One thing happening or the other thing is happening. So if you're not filling yourself up with the word of God, with the truth, then the other thing is happening. Then your mind is actually falling apart because everything else is going against it. And so um, what God has shown me is that if we want, as, the, uh, as his body, if we want to move in this direction, we will have to really take some responsibility on ourselves to start filtering what we put ourselves, what we fill ourselves with, and how much time we go into the Word of God. How much time do we start going through scriptures and start proclaiming and, and saying and believing what the scripture actually says with us. And um, one of the plane trips, I, I spent probably about three hours just filling myself up with, uh, with the Word. And towards the end of that flight, I was so um, I was so pumped up, like the scripture was just flowing through my head. Um, I mean, I could I could barely I had to contain myself because I was you know I was going to break out speaking in tongues and just scare everybody around me. You know, that's how excited my spirit was. And so um, God was just showing me that if I'm doing that, then that's what's going to dominate my life. That's what's going to dominate my life. If that's what dominates my life. Sickness and disease cannot touch me. The only thing that can come out of me is life, life abundant, which is health, um, his blessings, and everything else. And so the issues in our life that we're struggling in is, is, are the issues that we still have lies that we believe. And we know um, a lot of scripture, and I'll be the first one to admit. So in the past, I read the Bible a lot. So I mean, I knew the Bible... Uh, we learn it because we studied it in Russia. So um, I'm learning it in English right now, but it actually helps me in between the two languages even get deeper understanding in, in some parts of it. But it's one thing just to know the Bible. It's another thing to start practicing it and applying it and looking at it. Um, okay, how can I take the scripture and start immediately applying it in my life? Because if we don't apply it, if we don't speak it, we don't proclaim it, we don't apply it, then we don't allow it manifest in our life. And manifestations are big because that, you know, like, so we'll be talking to people and, and I'm still uh, guilty of that myself. Uh, I know what I believe and then I'll catch myself sometimes saying the opposite of what I believe. And um, the cool thing about it is I ask the Holy Spirit to show it to me. So when I say something, the opposite of what I'm supposed to say or the opposite of what I believe, um, sometimes throughout the day he'll show it to me. Does it in love and um, to where he doesn't condemn me? Uh, he just shows me like, yep, you're wrong there, and I'm like, yep, Holy Spirit, absolutely, I agree with you. I, you know, like, I should not be saying that. I, I know the truth, and I should not be saying um, the ne the negativity part. And so, as we start eliminating the lies, eliminating negativity, and start filling ourselves with the truth, then good things start happening, and things start changing. And it was uh, for me. Um, I decided for myself that that's the direction where I want to head. I hate pain. I hate sickness. I hate the devil. And so personally for me, I decided that I'm going to head the direction to where I will, uh, and I believe according to the word of God that, that it's achievable and it was already done before and God promised it, is that we can live a life without any sickness and disease. And so I want to encourage um fire up everybody, get everybody excited about, um, headed in the same direction, Head in a direction to where it's very achievable, to where we get, it doesn't matter um, what the sickness is in our body, it doesn't matter if it's been there our whole life, or it's been there a few days, but if we start um, taking the word of God, and start applying it, and start believing it, and start filling ourselves with that, then that's what's going to start taking over, and it doesn't necessarily, you don't, you know, like, it, it would be awesome if you can get a miracle in your life. Uh, something that would happen immediately, that would be good, um, that would be exciting. But it doesn't necessarily, healing can come with time, as long as you're headed in that direction. And so, um, 
the way one of the things that we talked about in our mind meal process is writing things down. And so I want to encourage everybody to, um, you know, New Year's is starting. Um, and if you haven't, start identifying the things where, where you know that the devil is uh, still has a stronghold in your life. Start identifying those parts and start replacing that with the truth and start uh, keeping track of it. And so one of the things that I did, and I shared this before, uh, there are some things, chronicle things that were with me that, uh, you know, I shared this before, like I could not, uh, um, I, I was not able to sit on a plane for more than like half an hour. I could not take long trips. And this happened to me in 2006. I was in, you know, in a, I hurt myself really bad and the doctors messed up. Um, sorry. 1996, when I was still a kid. And so the doctors told me that I can never, I will never be able to fly for more than half an hour. Basically, the only flight that I could ever take and set through that flight is from Portland to Seattle. That's, that, that's as far as I can ever fly. And, and, I, and I started, at first I agreed with it and settled with it. And for, for the longest time, that, that was the reality. I could not fly. I'd have to drive if I wanted to get somewhere, and then when I drive, I'd have to get up and walk around. But then I said, you know what? When I started learning about healing, like that's that, that's it. That's not going to happen anymore. And so I started believing, and I started saying, God, if you want me to travel, especially you know to go in your ministry, like that, that you know, like that has to go. Like, I will not accept it anymore. And so progressively, I started seeing that thing changing, but I started proclaiming it. But I would, I would keep track of it. I would keep track of the progress and, you know, and watch it until it went away completely. And so right now, um, I'm able to go the flight to, from Portland to Amsterdam. It's like 10 and a half, sometimes 11 hours. And I have zero issues with it. So like God completely healed me of that thing. It didn't happen instantly, but I made a decision and I started heading that direction. And so I've identified those things and I worked through um, and allowed God systematically just just wipe it out but I had to be persistent I had to see it as finished I had to see it even though um, physically I might have still experienced it but I had to push myself through it and so one of the things um, um, that I was learning at the gym when I was in Mexico is what I noticed, like I'm just trying to study like how the body reacts, reacts to our mind and to, and to the pain. And so um, George, the guy that's our, the, in charge of our life teams right now, he, um, he got me started on these intense workouts. And so what happens about on the 12th minute, I would start feeling sharp pain like in my side because you know, like, you know, my body's not used to it. And that was like, like that would be the limit like how far I can take that, that, uh, that workout. But um, at that point, when that 12 and a half minute mark would hit, my body and everything inside of me would just want to jump off the treadmill, like jump off and like and quit. But I decided I'm, I'm going to go through it. And so instead, I would just, by the stripes of Jesus, I'm healed. And I kept pushing it and pushing it and pushing it. And in a week, I was able to push it uh, to like 36 minutes. Um, and then what was interesting is when I got to the 36 minutes, immediately like I felt, okay, I got this. You know, like I said, I you know destroyed the devil. The next day, I get on the treadmill, and guess what? It started at the 12 and a half minute, and it was I was in, and I, I felt it, and I experienced that pain all the way to the 30, 36 minute mark. And I said, Dell, I'm going to be screeching. I'm going to be, you know, like, I'm going to, I don't care how much this pain is going to be. I'm going to get through this because I know if I don't, then this is where, you know, like, you're going to, that, that's where it's going to be. That's all that minute, that's where it's going to be. And so the next day, it was really hard. Like, I, you know, like, I, I pushed it and pushed it and pushed it. I, you know, I was in a lot of pain. And then the following day, it was all gone. But I had to make a decision to persist, to put up with it. And I think what happens is in our life is we're not willing to, when the enemy attacks, we're not willing to fight it off. And that's what I see where 
Um, today's society, everything's express service. You know, if you experience any pain, you can immediately, you know, you can grab pills, you can do this, uh, this and that. And people are not, people have a very low tolerance to, to anything. And so, and so if you have a low tolerance, you cannot have persistence with anything. And so if you're not going to be able to persevere, you're not going to, you're not going to be able to push your body and submit your body, um, to, you know, to where it needs to be submitted to. And so if we're not willing to put up a fight, the first time that the enemy attacks, next time he's going to put up, a, like he will put up a stronger fight. And then he will just, he will continue pushing us. So let's say um, in the case where I was talking about um, my intense workout, if I, did, if I gave up at 12 and a half minutes, it would not just stay there. Next time he would only let me go, let's say less and less and less until I completely would not be able to do it. It doesn't just stay in one spot. The fight is always shifting. We're either losing or we're winning. And so it's never like a lot of Christians, they, they they feel like they, they can just hang around in this comfortable middle middle area, but that's what the enemy is trying to get you to think, because he does not want you to uh, to put up and resist. And so he wants us in our life and any obstacle in our life, he wants us to get stuck in that middle area and that we're comfortable area. We're like, well, if the, you know, like if I won't touch the devil, he won't touch me. But that's the biggest trap of the enemy, because the second that he gets you to relax. That's when he will pull back a little bit, and when you're relaxed, he's going to kick you and then shove you back further. And so we can never relax. Like, if, if, he, if we feel um, an attack in a certain area of our life, that's the time to put up the shield of faith. That's the time to resist him. That's the time to push him back. And what I notice is, like, when the enemy is when we're diligent and when we're alert and we're aware of uh, when, when, he puts up, when he shoots his fiery darts, at that point, we can resist them and stop him, and it's a lot easier. But if we allow him to shoot us, and then we get caught on fire with those fiery darts, at that point it becomes very difficult. Um, like I gotta say, like when when you're in the middle of, of you know excruciating pain, it's really hard at that point to remember your Bible scriptures. So if, if you're not filled up with them, guess what? You're done. Good news is we have a pretty good sized group of people in our group right now. And so we're all growing at different levels. And we have many different wepo- weapons that we can use. And so I want everybody to feel comfortable to where um, if you get hit and it's hard, get some help right away. Don't try to, like, if, if it's hard on yourself, at that point, it's too late to figure it out. Get some help immediately. Call somebody, have somebody come, pray for you, talk to you. Uh, get help right away. Don't don't just continue allowing the devil to, to wipe you out further and further. Let let's help each other. That's why we're the body of Christ, and we can help each other. Um, one of the things that we discuss is that um, how come when people get prayed for, they get healed, and then the sickness comes back, and um, the the explanation that I like, you know, that Peter Blue Canyon explains it and Curry explains it, I mean, they all explain it the same way, is this, is we can get somebody else's faith to heal us, but at the end of the day, it will take our faith to keep us healed. And so, it's, it's a two-front two situation. So, our responsibility is to, for everybody in here, is to start building, building ourselves, like how do we build our faith? We know that when you speak, you know, faith comes by hearing. So when we start speaking and start digging into the Word of God and start getting grounded in the Word of God, our foundation starts growing. And as foundation, as our foundation starts growing, then the enemy will touch us less and less, and then he will fall off and completely not be able to touch us. But in the meantime, as we're growing, we have each other to help each other. And so I had no problem... Uh, you know, that, that night, turning to, to Natalie and saying, hey, please pray for me. So she prayed for me. She helped me at that moment. And then I was able to, you know, because I'm building my foundation in the Word of God, then I was able to continue to keep it for myself. But I was 
not afraid. I was not ashamed to turn to her and say, like, hey, I need your help right now. Um, and, and that's very normal. That's We should all feel very comfortable, like, if we're, if we're going through a hard situation, is to turn to somebody who we feel comfortable and ask for help, and we'll help each other as we're growing. No, so no. remember that if we choose not to grow our foundation, not to grow, then at that point, then we will have to rely on somebody else's faith all the time. Um, and that will work, but it's best if we grow our faith, grow our foundation, get stronger, and then and then get to a point where the enemy cannot touch us. Because uh, that's you know, Jesus said that we have, like we read, like, he gave us all authority, and he commanded us things that we're supposed to be able to do. So now let's go look um, another scripture that we all have. Mark 16, verse 15, and he said to them, Go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He who believes and is baptized will be saved, but he who does not believe will be condemned. And these signs will follow those who believe. So in here it says, these signs will follow those who believe. So if you're a believer, if you believe in Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, those are the, these are the, the next five things that I'm going to read are the ones that are, in, that are intended for all of us. In my name, they will cast out demons. They will speak with new tongues. They will take up serpents. And if they drink anything deadly, it will by no means hurt them. They will lay hands on the sick, and they will recover. So these five items, five items that I just listed out, all of those items is what Jesus said will follow people that believe. And so the question for us is, what do we choose to believe? Do we choose to believe what our physical senses, what this world is um, telling us? Or are we going to believe what the Word of God says? And I want to challenge our, our crew to start moving more and more into what Jesus said and, and, and allow those signs to follow. And um, but not just that these signs will manifest through us, but also allow and grow and build our foundation to where these things cannot touch us. Because uh, there is a lot of people that... Um, you know, that will pray for healing, for example, and, th and that you're supposed to do that, but yet the enemy will attack them too. And so we want to grow into a place, don't stay there to where, yes, life of God is flowing through us, but the enemy can continue hitting us. Let's work together to get to a place where the enemy now cannot touch us. We're continuing to put out God's life, but yet the enemy cannot touch us. Like the sicknesses cannot touch us. The attacks of the enemy cannot touch us. That Those are the things that, that Jesus promised and guaranteed to the body. And we have that in us. We have that life abiding in us. And if we allow those things to happen, then, then good things will happen in our life. And the other thing is, if we want to be effective in preaching the gospel, we have to be able to manifest on the physical level the kingdom of God. And we have to be able to do what Jesus did. And he said, these things that I did, you shall do, and greater things. So that's something that he, he gave to us. It is our right to be able to do things that he did, and that is to physically manifest the kingdom of God. And that's through healing. You know, physical is healing. You know, so people can see. A lot of people will not understand casting out demons. Uh, because that's sort of getting into more of the spiritual realm. A lot of people might not understand, you know, other things. But everybody will understand physical healing. So a lot of times people will say, well, why are you guys constantly just talking about healing, healing, healing? And my, my answer is, well, why did Jesus just constantly go around and heal everybody? That's what he did. That was his ministry. Why? Because we are his disciples, and he commanded us to do what he did. And so if we're going to make disciples, we have to be able to do 
We can only disciple people to do what Jesus did. We cannot get them to disciple anything else. So in order for a disciple to do things that Jesus did, we have to start doing things that Jesus did. And so practically, and we've been talking about this in the healing rooms, is um, what I encourage everybody to start doing is to start reading the four Gospels. Start studying like in detail what Jesus did. Start duplicating him. Start copying him. Start thinking like him. Start loving like him. Just start doing and being like him. That is what... That's what he came on this earth. Is to, to, one of the things is to show us an example of how we're supposed to be. And if we uh, if we're not studying how he was, if we're not starting his character, then we cannot be like him in this world. And we're supposed to be like him in this world, as he said, as he is. So are we in this world? And so we're supposed to be just like Jesus in this world, and we're supposed to strive that way. That, that direction. I know we're not going to be, uh, we're not going to necessarily get there overnight. That's not going to happen overnight. But we have to start somewhere and just start going that direction. As long as we're headed that direction, then we're not heading the opposite direction. If we're not going anywhere, then we're ho- then we're going backwards. If we're not doing anything, then we're becoming more like the devil. And that's not the state where we want to be. So not doing anything is not helping. So if we start doing something, start heading in the right direction, start being in whatever parts we can to be like Jesus. And there is lots of things that he did. He doesn't necessarily have to be immediately starting out with healing. Um, you can start showing love to people, compassion for people. Start doing things what he did. But in order for you to do that, you have to really study his character. We have to get into this work. Um, I was watching people on this trip, uh, and people are just tormented. People are in so much tormented. I mean, people's, um, the devil's way out is alcohol, drugs, partying, and and that's how people, people pay a lot of money to to be able to do those things just so they can temporarily um, feel the peace that they want to feel. But what they don't realize is that it's temporary and it's going to cost them, at some point it's going to cost them their life. But what Jesus offered is also going to cost us our life, but it's our life of the stuff that we don't want anyways. And then he gives us his life, which we want. And his life is peace, joy, uh, happiness, health. Uh, that's, that's what he wants to give us. Like if we give him our life and allow his life to manifest through us, then he him manifesting through us is what actually what people want. We have to understand that God is the one that created a human being. His word is the manual for every human being. He knows how we need to function. And so what people try to do with the help of the devil is use every other manual to function other than the original manual, the only one that works. And so if we're trying to operate out of a manual that was not uh, put out by the one who created us, it will never work. It will be, it will just, it will continue to lead to destruction. And um, we see that happening. Uh, People are just, people's lives are falling apart. Bad things are happening because they're not operating out of the word of God. The only way to get back to where we're supposed to get back to is to, start functioning operating out of the manual which is the word of God and as a believer we need to fall in love to where it does not leave us and it does not mean that you have to walk around with it but what I've been practicing is just you read scripture and just throughout the day think about it and you think about it and allow the Holy Spirit to just start showing you things revealing you things or you read a little bit about what Jesus did and just throughout the day ask the Holy Spirit to show you more reveal you more um it's very simple. Like filling yourself up with the Word of God is not that complicated. You don't have to go walk around the Bible and be, you know, literally be in the Word nonstop reading. It's dwelling on it, thinking about it, versus filling yourself up with junk. Because if you're not thinking about it, then the times that you're not, guess what you're doing? You're filling yourself up with the opposite of the Word of God. Because the world, society, is set up to steal. The truth. And Jesus talked about that in his parable, to 
where when the, when the word is sown, the enemy tries to come and steal it. And he does that through every way possible. And, and we have to make that decision. And so um, I, I got more of these books, Technology and What Is In You. So if, if anybody does not have one of these, um, come up to me, I'll give you one. But start memorizing the scriptures that are written in here. And start throughout the day, just, just start, allow them just to start going through your mind. And really good things will happen to you. You will notice that like the more that you just start thinking and dwelling on it, you will automatically catch yourself thinking. Like the night that I woke up uh, when, when the enemy attacked me, guess what was going through my mind? Whatever I put in there before. If I did not put the word of God in there before, guess what would be happening right now? I'd probably be in Mexico still somewhere, you know, it's being operated on, right? Who knows what would have happened? Who knows what would be but because I chose to stay on the, stay with the Word of God, He could not do anything. But I had to do that beforehand. It's too late to do it when we're already under the attack. And so, if we're proactive, then we, you know, then reaction will be very easy. When the devil attacks, our reaction is, "By His stripes I'm healed." Devil, you can't touch me. You can't do nothing to me. And then He says, "Yeah, sorry, I got the wrong person." And you move on. But we have to make the decision. And so, I um, I want to encourage us to, and every single person here, to start heading in a direction to where we can allow God's kingdom to be manifested in our life. And one of those aspects is to divine health, to where we're in full health. Because if we're in full health, um, we can be a lot more effective for the kingdom. I was looking, if you think like, what is the biggest industry in this world right now? Anybody guess? Pharmaceutical. I was going to say something else. <laughs> well, I, I mean, if pharmaceutical is not the top industry, I know oil is probably up there, but I'd say pharmaceutical, if it's not there yet, it's very close to being there, and it's going to continue progressing. Why? Because um, people are so dependent on medicine to where billions and trillions of dollars are spent. Imagine how much more could be done with that money. How much more, like, if, if, if nobody would have to help health insurance, if nobody would have to have medicine. And so our job is to crush that industry. What's interesting is um, I want to read this. So in Second Chronicles, uh, chapter sixteen, verse eleven. It says, And behold, the acts of Asa, first and last, lo, they were written in the book of the kings of Judah and Israel. And in the thirty-ninth year of his reign, Asa was deceased in his feet. His disease were exceeding great, yet in his disease he sought not to Jehovah, but to the physicians. And Asa slept with his fathers. Within a year he died. Yeah. So, um... Medicine can help you prolong your life temporarily. And I don't like to talk about medicine, but I see more and more that when people start relying on that more than God, more who is your healer, because God is our healer. He is our life. And if we're going to depend more on that, um, medicine has its limits. And so... Um, Yes, it will help you temporarily, but if, if that's going to be your only dependency, it's, it's not going to help you too, too much, too long. We see people that have cancer, that even, uh, that overcame cancer once, it comes back again. And then usually the second time, they can already, like, this uh, survival rate of uh, repeat, repeat cancer patients is very minimal. 
Um, and we just saw um, Paul Allen, the Blazer owner, he overcame cancer once, and then when it came back, it was so aggressive that medicine could no longer help him. You know, like he just passed away um, last month. But why is that? Because death is the last enemy that's out there. And at some point, death will be wiped out. You know, it, the, the Word of God talks about that uh, death will be, um, God will remove it. But right now it still reigns. But for us that are in Christ, death has no power. Jesus defeated death. And so if we rely on the source of life, who is, who is Jesus, rely on him to be our healer, and allow him to flow through our bodies and restore our bodies, and count on him to be faithful to what he promised, then our bodies will be healthy, and we will not die of sickness. I believe that believers should die whenever they decide to die, when their days are filled, they're satisfied, they ask, they tell goodbye to everybody, and then just go, go to the Father, but in full health. I believe that's God's will. I do not believe, looking through the scriptures, uh, nobody will persuade me now that uh, that is God's will for sicknesses uh, to be in our body or that God teaches through sicknesses. And that's something that in the past I strongly believed. I, I was the one that believed that God uses sicknesses to teach, that God brings sickness to take us away you know, prematurely and all of those things. But the more that I study the word of God, the more sure I am that sickness and diseases of the devil, God has nothing to do with it. God is life, life abundant, and that is his will for us. His will for us is divine health and health all the time. Amen? Amen. Right. So we'll do communion right now.